Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, and welcome to another episode of Phanalysis, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I am Ready for this is Gregor91. Hello. This is Evan95. Hello. This is Jensurai1. Justin Loyal, Unafraid of Toil. And this is Antoine Bandelay. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Uh, why don't you explain what we're doing with this one uh, today, Matt? Okay, this is the uh, overview of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, this is kind of like a thing for people who don't feel like watching us go and pick every single chapter bit by bit um, slowly through the book, which is like a multi-part thing that's finished, by the way, if you're watching this in the future and you don't know what we're talking about. Um, this is like a full-scale look at the book, talking about like our general impressions, what we thought of it before and after reading it, and talking about some of our favorite and least favorite moments, pretty much. And uh, so, yeah, that's what we're doing today. Okay, so yeah. um, opening up with general impressions, guys. Who wants to start on this one? Uh, having reread the book now, how does it hold up to you in general? It entirely holds up. Like I, I forget how much of a joy it's. Just, it feels like um, what is it? A glove Returning that always home. fits, or whatever, or like riding a bike, or whatever. I, like, yeah, I always home. like how J.K. Rowling puts it, with you know, Hogwarts would always be there to welcome you home, because it really does feel like that mm -hmm. when you reread these books for me. Right. It's very true. It's a very. It's like a comfort food, except it's comfort <laughs> reading. You know what I mean? Like especially when you, you might read a lot of other stuff, and then you come back to it, you're like, ah, oh, this just feels so right. Why isn't everything just like this? You know. Um. So yeah, it just it felt very comfortable, and it was it's nice um, it. it's definitely uh, different from like you know when we read it as kids, but it. It's it's not different in a way that so much diminishes the experience. It's more a case of just seeing it in a new light. Hmm. I think is that as I think I think our, that's kind of all what we're all sort of getting at. Yeah, it's our knowledge of the rest of the series and all and where everything leads kind of gives this book a depth and a context that, well, was always there, but that we we didn't really notice it before because obviously we didn't have the whole picture. We just had one seventh. <laughs> See, I, I I continually reread the other works in the series because i just like revisiting them so much this is one of the ones i revisit least i haven't read it in years and it's because i know so much more than the characters do but it's not bad you know what i mean it's a fairly timeless introduction to this story yeah it's kind of like going back and watching you know a new hope you know it's like even though even if you're more equated with the larger universe it's still it's still an enjoyable movie mm. not not in the same way That's i'm not a saying loose it's loose comparison not, yeah i was gonna say because like a new I, hope I, is I was about to say favorite, not in the same sure. way <laughs> yeah, yeah i know and it's a yeah, not a new hope way, is like just... literally almost a perfect movie. I can prove that. Yeah. I can take pen and paper to like the page and prove that that's almost a perfect movie. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. But I'm just saying it's like you know, it, you could. It's the first like, step uh, into a larger world, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I was trying to. Is, I was right. trying to find the words. <laughs> <laughs> Obi Wan puts it best. Um, yes, he always does. Yeah, but for me, it's 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 again. It comes down to the fact that J.K. Rowling has that writing style. You know, you can look at anything she mm -hmm. makes, even the uh, the books that she's done since Harry Potter, which I think we can all agree are by no means um, the never same read quality. Them. Never um, read them either. The, the actual written style itself is just as seamless for me. You know, it, it the pay, the words flow on the page. Her style just uh, just flows perfectly, and whether it be book one or book seven, that doesn't change for me. Um, but I'm with Matt. I haven't revisit, re revisited the first book anywhere near as much as the other ones uh, since becoming a, a quote-unquote adult. <clears throat> and specifically, it's her Harry Potter stuff, because anytime she's doing something that's Harry Potter-related, that voice is very um, prevalent versus some of her other works, which are her more adult fiction. Like, I tried Casual Vacancy, mm. but just it just didn't have the same thing. Um, but whenever she's working in this world, <clears throat> whether it's Fantastic Beasts or Beatles the Bard or... Um, well, well, Cursed Trials, she actually didn't do. She just... They, she had... Mm -hmm. Playwrights do that, so technically I can I I can actually uh, like disregard that. <laughs> but <laughs> any other time, or even with Pottermore, you know, most of that stuff is written by her. Um, you, she mm. she has a certain for her too. Like Hogwarts is it, it, home for her as well, or Harry yeah. Potter in general is home for her. What, um, I think that's where she is best suited. What you're mm -hmm. saying to me is sort of like a long form version of like to me, this is not her voice. This is a character she plays like in mm. her mind, and right? Like, and, and she slips into it. Yeah, like she likes going back to Hogwarts for that reason. She doesn't sound like this. Like when you hear her talk, you know, and it doesn't. I don't hear it in her voice. But that's a voice she's meticulously crafted, and she likes slipping into it and playing that character. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, it just flows off I, in every single person she writes. Uh, specifically with yeah. the Harry Potter verse, for sure. 
But uh, yeah, with uh, with that covered on general impressions, what about we dive into the character work as a whole? We're not going to go into every single character in detail, guys. That's There's too many characters to talk about for that. We're going to have to save that for us alternate videos where we focus on them specifically. Yeah. But uh, we can do, talk character about her character work as a whole. Because it's kind of, it's we kind of touched crazy. on that just then. It is crazy how distinct her characters are. Um, like every single one has their own like individual voice. And it's very easy to distinguish between like who's speaking even if you took away like dialogue tags um generally speaking you would know exactly who who the impression of that person is and she does that for like every character because i can't mm. think of any two characters that i would ever like misalign with someone else like if mcgonagall's speaking to even, jordan who's speaking to neville like they all the, have yeah, different yeah. voices the craziest thing is the twins. You can tell the difference between right. the two. Yes. That's the <laughs> yeah. last thing I was about to say, actually. It's 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 impressive in general, but the fact that she can do it for every single character, especially what the ones with such subtle differences as the twins, it's it's astounding. Because she does it all the time. You know, whenever they're in sequence, she often just cuts between the uh, the dialogue jumps, and you'll be able to tell, not just from the, the sequencing of, of, the, of the sentences, but just the, the phrasing, the 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 something that's there that you know um, um, is screaming at you, but which who is who, and that's for every single character, you know, main or mild. Right. Also, what do you think? I think they're obviously both the twins are a type, eight a uh, type personalities. But who do you think of the two is more of an A type? Fred. Than the other? Well, Fred. Of yeah, course. I was going to say he's yeah. very yeah. much yeah. the, yeah. Reason, I was gonna say the Fred, reason why yeah. you could tell the difference. Yeah, exactly. And also, um, exactly. It, although Fred is like the first to like, you know. He, he definitely cares about Percy. Like, it's like an underlying, you know, emotion that he hides. Like, he cloaks in, like, pest, you know, like, being by being a pest to him. But he really does care about him. George is usually, like, a, just a little bit more soft. He doesn't carry the joke on too far the way that Fred does oftentimes. Mm. You'll see that as time goes on. He has a little bit more sensitivity. Just a little bit, though. Completely agree. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I don't think that's in the books. Though, it's it? not, no. But no, it's a funny. Not. Aside no. from it, the it, holy, it, the holy joke is though. Yes, holy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that, and that's that is. one of the worst ones. <laughs> getting, um, getting, getting ahead of ourselves. But yeah, that that's it's funny because that part of the scene for me is the only part that works uh, <laughs> compared to the books. That one thing <laughs> they added. Um, but yeah, the, the the characters obviously as a whole, you said like every single one has their own voice. I think that's definitely the thing we have to focus on most. The fact that it is. Um, so continuous throughout all of the books. The voice stands out. No matter who it is, no matter what the scene, no matter what the moment, that will always stay true. And it, and it adds to the, her written flow as well. It, it blends the two power, you know, greatest strengths of her as a writer together um, mm -hmm. to kind of craft that feeling of home. And it's not just the characters as well, the, the places as well. The way she describes certain areas with some, some degree of familiarity for some places like Hagrid's Hut, for example, or certain areas in Hogwarts with the Great Hall. There's always that sense of coming back to them whenever you you are coming back to them with the characters themselves, um, juxtaposed against the, you know the new places that they visit, with how alien they feel and how um, immediately she captures them. Um, I mean, book one specifically, stuff like the uh, the Mirror of Erised uh, room. It's just a classroom, but somehow you get that kind of dark, eerie feeling from it the same way Harry does in an instant it's just a snapshot. Does it? Hmm. I mean, why would anyone ever want to leave Hogwarts? Mm. Like, my 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 profession would definitely. I want to be a teacher. I don't yes. care. Have me teach anything. The most boring <laughs> class. Could I just live here? I don't care. I'll replace bins. Damn it! <laughs> Someone has to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so favorite chapters, guys. Um, three favorite chapters. If you can iron. But it just down. to be fair to bins, some of. I mean, well, not to be fair to Mister Bins, he sucks. But <laughs> some of my favorite teachers in. It's like, where's this in... going? Yeah. <laughs> Some of my favorite teachers in school period have been my history teachers. I feel like they're always the more Mocked. interesting or have the most world insight. Um I mean granted Ben's just like wrote like expression, but generally speaking, history is actually one of my favorite subjects because of the sure. teachers. Likewise, well, because I, one of my best his story. story. Like the word is like it's like the story right. of man. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it's a story. Like if you're not interested in history, you really have a terrible teacher. Everyone should be interested in history. I, like anyone who goes, I hated history in school. You must have had a terrible teacher. Everyone, yeah. it's our story. You know, completely agree. Mm -hmm. Um, it's I had one of my favorite. Well, one of the best teachers I ever had was called Mr. Todd, and he was a history teacher. He used to jump on the desks and act oh, out. Oh, we're gonna be doing shout outs. Uh, Miss Mermelstein, I'm gonna give Miss Mermelstein a shout out. She's awesome. That's, that's almost it's like a great Harry name as well. Yeah, it's Harry Potter to know, Miss Mermelstein. My first yeah. social studies teacher in uh, junior high, in grade seven, Mr. Evans. He also had a he also had a fantastic singing voice because during those first few years uh, 
at school, we would, he would actually be brought into the gym for morning assembly and sang the national anthem of Canada every morning for about <laughs> five years, and his singing voice was fantastic. That's like uh, one of the teachers coming in and singing like the Sorting Hats uh, song from that oh, year every morning. That explains why Connor is the way <laughs> he that's is. Why, that's, that's, uh, that explains it, it all. Oh, really, uh, <laughs> revelation. Right. Uh, okay, so but, we'll move on to the favorite. Yeah, favorite what? chapters, guys. Yeah. Okay. If you can. Now we all struggle with this quite a bit. Mm. Okay, I'll start more? because I it, the issue for me because I actually I think I'm the one who brought this up too. I was like, are we doing that? Are we doing like the top favorite chapters? And I'm like, oh wait, no, I shouldn't have said that because I have no idea what to <laughs> think because I literally went through it and I was like, oh, like that one, like that one, oh, like that one. So basically here i like the first chapter a lot um as an introduction to the world through muggle viewpoint um and seeing how important that is so that's the reason why i have that as one of mine uh diagon alley and kind of uh, the journey from platform nine and three quarters i have those both because um i really really love being in the world of the wizards and i feel like um especially with diagon alley you get to see like everything that a wizard's normal life is um but then also with the journey that uh, platform nine and three quarters harry gets to see like a, a wizard family through the weasleys and i really enjoyed the stuff that was going on between fred and george um and how they were kind of talking about harry and harry kind of seeing we well, saw his fame for sure at first in diagon alley and um leaky cauldron but seeing it through like other kids and how they're talking about him i really like that and then the stuff that was going on the train and then the sorting hat, I just love like an introduction to Hogwarts and then, you know, everything with the, the sorting and it's getting introduced to all the other students. Potion's master, I love uh, Harry's sass against Snape. This is half the book. Um, and, yeah, I was going to say, are we going to get through any of those? He's literally <laughs> going issue. through each one. This is the issue I have. Um, Halloween, I, I love the introduction of uh, the, the friendship. Um, and then Quidditch, I actually, I know you were saying before off podcast so you're like oh yeah quidditch i don't know but, but that's actually one of my favorite chapters too it's, like, like, I it's, it's, a, it's a fine no no it was a fine chapter it was one of our worst recording sessions if you watched oh, it oh yeah like, that's uh, awesome. i was, I was calling I us out yeah yeah. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, because I really, I really enjoy that. Mirror of Eris said, obviously, um, that's probably the one of the more um, deep ones in terms of overall theme of of loneliness and and loss. Um, and we get we don't know it yet, but for Dumbledore, that that has extra meaning to it uh, as well. Um, and then, uh, you know, through the trap door, I like, you know, the trio and everything that they got to do in, in that chapter. And then my favorite moment, though not my favorite chapter, is the last chapter. And uh, it's the Neville earning 10 points um, because of the bravery he did standing up to his own friends. So, like, yes, after doing that, I'm like, I, I can't choose, like, any like, <laughs> I, get, I get the feeling I love yeah, the book. I was, was yeah, going to say, I like, you cannot book. do this when we get to Order the Phoenix. Yeah. Be like, oh, just no, 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 no. five minutes of just not, Antoine. Like, <laughs> yes, there, the, I do have more funny... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The funny thing is, is that now that you mentioned the moment where uh, Dumbledore gave Neville points for standing up to his friends, the funny thing is, is that out of all of the points he gave out for accomplishments he valued, even though that was the accomplishment that got the least number of points, it's the accomplishment that I think Dumbledore himself valued the most personally, because that was what he himself failed to do with Grindelwald. Right, mm. yes. Um, and also mm. just showing that also that even... The feather, you know, the feather can break the camel's back, even if Neville feels like he's not always going to be hot shot or whatever. Even his small contribution amounts to something greater, mm. which uh, he takes on, you know, in the seventh book. He takes, uh, Harry's gone and he has to take up the mantle himself and he, he's able to do that. Mm. Again, read that fan fiction, Antoine. <laughs> <laughs> I know I haven't. We'll do that eventually. <laughs> um, oh dear. But yeah, but yeah, I don't have the same thing for the other books. Like, like it, it's this is the one I feel like is the most uh, through lined in terms of like Perfectly my enjoyment, wrapped, self contained, that kind of thing. Right, right. With the other ones, I Complete. definitely do have more more distinct moments, mm. especially in Nasty Man. It's probably true, if only Netflix. because this is like the least convoluted. You know, like this mm. is just right, Harry's yeah. first year at Hogwarts, so there's very Go little to, to you know muddle yeah. it. Um, a lot of introduction. Next, yeah? yeah, you go next, Matt. Okay, so for more or less the same reasons that he said, my first two chapters are kind of like a combined one: Diagon Alley and uh, Journey from Platform Nine and Three Quarters. Um, yeah, it's, like it's we referenced, wizards. yeah. Well, we we referenced the uh, Obi Wan quote, like a first step into a larger world. Like to me, like that's mm -hmm. like that. That to me is like why I love Hagrid so much. Is that he's like mm -hmm. the vehicle for that. Um, he's like uh, Harry's and our like first like you guide through like the, the the wizarding world and who could like ask for a better one um platform from nine and three quarters because of what he said 
<clears throat> with uh, Harry meeting a wizarding family. I also like, I wasn't there for the recording, um, so I didn't get to discuss with you guys, but it was fun to listen to. Um, but I like the, um, the fact that uh, although he is sort of introduced sort of obliquely to Ron first, the first interaction he has with one is like the twins. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a little bit more um, realistic and you can see their kindness and the action, like they come to help him lift something he can't lift by himself. And um, they don't things know like he's that. the Harry Potter guy at that point. No, yeah, he's, he's, he's just a, a, he's just a, a kid. kid. Yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. Uh-huh. Um, but I mean, you know, if this if this is like on your guys' things, you guys can jump in and talk about it whenever or whatever. But like my last chapter is uh, through the trapdoor because that's like the trio doing something like an equal measure for the most part, aside from Harry having to actually face Voldemort, but um, mm-hmm. without their help. But I love how that doesn't really happen <laughs> very often. Like it, I guess you could say it happens in the seventh book. Like they're all kind of in that together. But um, until that point. This is like Harry's the hero, you know. Like they're they're, they're never all together at the climax the way they are in this particular book again. Yeah, they're the supporting yeah. trap the door. Most series. For, for, oh. Yeah, through the trap door is also a perfect trial by fire for the trio because it's essentially a situation that tests all of their capabilities and skill sets equally because mm-hmm. each different room requires a different thing which they each have. It's not like Harry just effortlessly right. plows through the whole thing by himself with them supporting. Yeah. It's literally like, okay, we got we got to strategize and play chess. Ron, it, you're up. Oh, we got they to solve this. They were all reliant on each other. Yeah, yeah that's one oh, of my favorite things. This... Sorry, that's one of my yeah. favorite things. They about never the would have made it unless they were all there. Yeah. Precisely, and that's and before. Before oh, we sorry. Just, just jump ahead. off that last point, because you said about Harry kind of going through as the hero, um, that's very true, and and he definitely does kind of take point on that for most of the rest of the um, series. Um, you know, the support group of the trio do kind of take a back seat for the next four or five um, books, but uh, oh, three or four, I guess. But um, yeah, the thing I like is that in every single one, Harry would fail without the others. He would not accomplish anything without Hermione. And sure, Mike. he would. Yeah, th- I'm not even arguing that. Yeah, it's just that's like, my favorite thing about they, it, though. There's always less present. time. Yeah, they spend it, like there's legitimacy to like his rant in the fifth book, where it's like mm-hmm. it was me and I did this and I did this part. You know, like there is legitimacy to that. And before somebody corrects me with the uh, they were there in order the phoenix, you know, at the ministry, that's true. Wait, in the but fifth everyone book, you said failed. I did it. Wait. Yeah, like remember when he's mad about being um, not being uh, let in on everything from Dumbledore, and he's like, Oh, from Dumbledore. Like I thought she meant from because yeah. I remember when they were forming the the Dumbledore's army like that. Specifically, he said that you know it sounds great. It's early book stuff. Oh, like, okay, okay. Yeah. okay gotcha, no, gotcha. no, it's like he he's like mad about Ron being made prefect, and he's like had nipped. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, 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 like yeah, you know, um, but anyway, uh, but yeah, they are, they are there at the climax of at the Ministry battle, like you know, in the Order of the Phoenix, but everyone failed like miserably, so that doesn't really count in my mind as the trio accomplishing something the way it, it did in this first book. And in the later books, it's also I, them alongside Harry rather than them working as a specific mm-hmm. trio as well, which is the big thing. Right, there's Neville I, and Luna and Ginny, yeah. The other thing I do like about the uh, whole obstacle course through the trap door is that the entire thing was basically designed to play to Voldemort's psychology because it's basically just playing to his refusal to rely on others by just creating an obstacle course that he himself can get through purely on the back of his own abilities until he gets to the mirror, setting up a false expectation. But it's also because it's designed to play to Voldemort's psychology. It also ends up playing to Harry's psychology perfectly, but for the opposite reasons. It reminds Harry of the need to rely on others and work as a team because they wouldn't have gotten anywhere if they didn't work as a team. Whereas we all know that Voldemort could have just powered through this whole thing single-handedly until he got to the mirror. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. amusing because if he'd mm-hmm. bought a follower, follower that genuinely wanted to not use it and just give it to Voldemort, um, they'd have got it instantly. They'd have received it, handed it over. Which I know Quirrell says he wants Possibly, to do, but obviously yeah. he's got Voldemort riding on his back, so it doesn't quite work that way. But he knows that and in Dumbledore's head, he it, knows that he'll go alone. Yeah, and I think the well, other it's just thing the is, use of it too, like not to use it because he specifically wants to use it for Voldemort. So that that well, that's true. Yeah. That's true as well. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing is that Quirrell is probably thinking, I need to get hold of the elixir of life to restore my body because Voldemort's soul is sucking <laughs> me dry, like Jeebus. I'm like a meth addict here. <laughs> oh dear. Um. So yeah, uh, who else wants to go next on the chapter list then? Well, for, for me, um, in order in order of when they appear in the book, not in order how much I like them, it goes, well, but even so, it is kind of like that. It's uh, Diagon Alley, for all the reasons we already talked about, introduction to the world. Um, Halloween, specifically because, you know, you see the trio come together, and I love, you know, I love uh, stories that 
uh, tackle, you know, friendship and all that. And then, well, Miravera said, I think that's kind of a constant for all of us, isn't it? Mm, uh, definitely. On so far, yeah. At this it, point, it, so far, yeah. Yeah. But again, uh, again, not to I, forecast it too much. Like like the things that aren't in my favorite chapters or my favorite right. moments yeah. as well. So yeah, <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So, you know, same reasons. Mm. I've uh, for me. Oops, sorry, Connor, you go. Okay, I was gonna list off my chapters. Uh, for me, my favorite chapters are. I just kind of stopped and thought for a second when asked the question, "What are my three favorite mm-hmm. chapters?" Okay, what are the three things from this book? That give me the most to think about, like, because what I like really favor are implications about world building and tests of character and personality. So for that reason, my three chapters are Sorting Hat, Mirror of Arised, and The Forbidden Forest, because each of these chapters feels features a lot of foreshadowing about the nature of the wizarding world, and they each feature major personality tests. The Sorting Hat, The Mirror of Arised, as well as The Forbidden Forest is more world building, but the personality test I see in there is would you drink unicorn blood? No. No. Yeah. I would. Like, it's like, it, it comes with <laughs> the. It, it's like, it's Although, almost not even like the the respect too, for like what the creature is. It's it comes too much of a price. It's like my Ravenclaw yeah. mind's like that's not worth it. Also, it's kind of vague though. Like it's like what is the curse? Like it's like you have a cursed life. But what does that mean exactly? Do yeah. it like can can do it, can it, it's hard to breathe or like do you want fingers fall off? Like what? Yeah, what is we the said curse? when we analyzed the chapter um, that that was one of my favorite things about it. The fact it was left so mercurial and uh, ill defined. It didn't need to be spelled out for you. It was just the, the single sentence of "you have a half life, a cursed life" is 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 just perfect for it. Um, yeah, you don't it, need to. You can just imagine like, what that all you need. But that's sort of the. Uh... Oh, you know what's similar to kind of? Uh, it's kind of like um, uh, the resurrection stone. Like you don't really mm. bring back the person you love. It's kind of like a wispy, weird spirit thing that you can't really interact with. It could be something similar to that, where your half life is like, yeah, you don't like maybe you know be. half your soul's gone, kind of a situation, or I, you're not. I like to interpret it as it's unique for whoever drinks it, but like whatever, like whoever you are, however you differ from the other person that drank it, you are not going to live a life that you'll de- that you would deem to be fulfilled for whatever reason. Like like whatever stops you from attaining oh, you like life, food, that's going to happen. You can never to you. taste food again, or it's always just oh. For you. oh you like uh, yes. like alcohol, you can never get drunk. You know, sim- simple you, things like live. that. You'll yeah. continue like to your... live, but you just won't be happy. Mm. Like you just yeah. won't be right. Yeah. You're either cursed with inevitable failure, or you're basically the skeleton crew from Curse of the Black Pearl. Hmm. Either way, it, you're you're screwed. In most it's, cases, immortality really isn't as good as it sounds. It's an eternity of madness. It never like, did yeah. to me. Like my my family is very religious, or not my family, but my grandma in particular. And I always like she's always talking about, oh, one day I get to turn, return to my youth and like live in the paradise. And I'm like. That seems like it would like even when I was a kid, I was like, that doesn't seem like that fun. You know what I mean? Like I feel like after the first like two hundred years, you'd be kinda like I mean three hundred years, you'd be like uh, uh, mortality <laughs> always needs an opt out feature if you want it to be good. Otherwise mm-hmm. you do not take that right. deal. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Highland, Highlander. Mm. Yeah. Um but yeah, for me, um my favorite chapters are Halloween, Mirror of Error said, and Trudeau Trapdoor. For again, for all the reasons we've already said, the fact that it's uh it, mm-hmm. they cement the the trio um they they have a lot of my favorite moments throughout there they're very funny chapters um by and large uh in different configurations obviously um they mirror mirror ever said in, in particular was a very powerful chapter you know the rest of them i love for individual things that happen within them um but the mirror of ever said for me was if you just took any single chapter from the book and wanted to say this is how powerful harry potter can be that would be the one you'd choose um you know just for its independent quality uh so and then you know the message it gets across so that that had to make the list for me um but all of my favorite moments have all been stated thus far um with with the exception of christmas but uh yeah so it, it's it's funny well, how we all have the same let's favorites. Move into christmas favorite christmas is awesome moments, digging it. Which, i mean that's yeah. part of mirror is said so mm, that's true yeah. as well yeah um but yeah, well, it, it, it is time thing. for favorite moments yeah. like everyone's yeah, already yeah. had their so christmas okay you could talk about why you love christmas it's just so 
fun and warming and and heartfelt you know it's 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 christmas on page in hogwarts it just makes it even better um even as a kid i used to read this and, and just feel like it was christmas in real life um the, the the way the interaction particularly the twins again um the way they bring um ron and and harry and, and percy into the into the christmas spirit and say right you know you're not sticking with the prefects today you're with family um they ju- it just it comes across so natural and so heartfelt uh, everything about it they do it. always make that's a that's one of my that's one of my christmas favorite moments series. like mm. every year there's like a different thing at christmas yeah. almost that, um, yeah that's true and it's the best that is weasley's that uh bring forth like the christmas spirit because of the whole family dynamic like they're a huge uh, family and they've already brought harry in even at the beginning and yes, yeah. it's just exemplified here i think it is it's like, especially with the christmas sweater too so wholesome so even like it. later like later other, in the, book, like... the weasley's other contribution to christmas is snowballing voldemort <laughs> yeah right but no, that the family sequence is, is just so wholesome, and, it, and it, it's just to see Harry's reaction to having a real family moment at Christmas just really gets it gets it right there mm-hmm. for me. Because it's which the is first another time reason he's that, had one. Yeah. yeah, which is another reason that one of my other favorite moments is you know during the mirror when he sees his family for the first time and he describes it, it describes it how he wants to follow them into the mirror and it's just like gosh yeah it's hot like it, it just sure. it highlights it highlights like so many like implications like the the implications of abandonment loneliness ab- abuse like all that stuff and it's it just it, it encapsulates so much in just a few simple simple uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, sentences it's just brilliant. Mm. It's, uh... I like my favorite thing about the mirror because it's on my list as far as like the Arisid thing my favorite thing is like Dumbledore's reason for not wanting to pursue it like yeah. just the way he mm-hmm. speaks about that that's my favorite part of that chapter that's why it's not my favorite chapter but that's like one of my favorite moments in the book is Dumbledore's message we mentioned voices think... at the start of the of the recording um, Dumbledore's voice is one of those ones that works so well for me because he is um, for all intents and purposes a very stereotypical archetype as a character but Dumbledore never for a moment feels that way you know he's he has so much personal flavor attached to him through and and such a divine voice that he always feels like Dumbledore not oh this is the Merlin advisor character oh this is the you know the helpful wizard mentor no it, it's Dumbledore I mean, yeah he is that but it's like she revamped it like mm. that she jk rowling did like she co-opted it i'm gonna make my own version of that yeah, and yeah. It's so there's nothing I think... there's nothing wrong with the stereotype as long as you you make all characters are mm. yeah, yeah, exactly. especially especially yeah, exactly. when you make like, the stereotype because now people are dumbledore characters they're not merlin characters anymore you yeah know, he is now that archetype rep, you know um representative representative right he fits the archetype but it's the fact that she made him a person you know what mm-hmm. i mean like with an individual personality that sets him apart and that's like the main thing is just making these people their own you know mm-hmm. even though you have like you know hermione and ron who are like the friend characters who are like you know the, the companions they have their distinct own personalities you know or uh, any other character that's in the book you have to make them feel exactly. I, I always think it's good i always think it's good when you feel as though the supporting characters could possibly carry their own book in any or story. just live their own life yeah exactly yeah, yeah. They're doing something um, when they're off page rather than just disappearing into the ether. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting how well she accomplished it's interesting how well she accomplished that in this book, given how distant Dumbledore is from Harry at this part mm. in the series. Yeah, because he only has a few moments with him. Um and we, and they're noteworthy in the fact that they are standing out from the norm because he isn't supposed to have this connection yet. But uh but the moment mm-hmm. she does have, the t- very small amount of time she allocates to Dumbledore, um, she does a lot with. And and it's you know, it's one of her key strengths in general, just making the most out of such few p- um pages or even lines on the page. We, mm-hmm. we spoke about how the reasons... scene felt like it was much longer and it was only a single page with Dumbledore in the mirror of said. Take notes, Jude it. Law. <laughs> I think part, one of the I yes. think one of the reasons why Dumbledore works so well is that even in this first book, you kind of get the implication that it's not that he's just his wisdom isn't just from seeing shit; it's that he's done some shit, which we find out later. Yeah, Dumbledore has done some shit, and it's just the fact that there's that little implication of the fact that this guy's just a wee bit shady. That I think is what gives him so much of his depth. He's imparting wisdom. He's not preaching to Harry as well, which is important. Right. You that's very important. He's, he's, he's not that's, not, that is, that's it. That is the Dumbledore thing. He speaks to you as an equal, even if you're not one. Mm. Yeah. That's Dumbledore. Yeah. It's like take it or leave it. You know, the rest is up to you. Yeah. It's exactly. the way he speaks to Tom. Or you know, like when he like he doesn't call him Voldemort. It's like Tom Riddle. Like, but it's like it, it is a mutual respect almost. 
but you know what I mean? Like even when he's putting a like a hint of contempt behind it, he speaks to him very civilly. Mm. And he's always civil. You know, we, we very rarely if ever see that mask drop. It's something that Harry specifically notes every time it does happen. When you see the fury of Vol- uh, Voldemort, fury of Dumbledore, um, and you understand why people fear him. That, that's very rare, um, which is what makes it so powerful, of course. But, uh, but my yeah, other favorite moments. I was going to say any other favorite moments. This, so. <laughs> <laughs> I like just un- Uncle Vernon meets Hagrid. I love. I, I love to laugh <laughs> at Uncle Vernon. It's funny. Like he's a character. There was that Schadenfreude. <laughs> like yeah, I yeah. have that for Uncle Vernon. I like to watch him <laughs> writhe just as he tries to go through life. <laughs> um, they think in strange ways, but you know. <laughs> yeah. was I really do love. I, I love to hate him. Like you know, like I, I really do. Like I, I like spending time with just his misery in these early parts of all the books. It's hilarious to me. Mm. Um, so yeah, Uncle Vernon and Hagrid, and also I really like um, Harry meeting Draco for the first time, which I always forget about because right in the um, little... when he's getting fitted for his robes. Mm-hmm. And also Harry meeting uh, uh, Ollivander and getting his wand. Yes, yes. Talk oh, about yeah. that a lot with the very That's few nice one, um, yeah. pages. That was a mm. really cool part of the chapter, that one. Um, and again, it doesn't really foreshadow anything in particular or, or um, foreshadow events. It just gives you information that will they later have greater relevance and be mm-hmm. richer. Which I guess is the definition of foreshadowing. But you know what I mean? It's not like it's a necessary plot. You don't need to learn anything here to understand it's... anything later. It's just it's a callback in the future. It... Is foreshadowing, but it's in that way that she does. It's very sort of oblique to mm. the point where, like, you don't you don't immediately recognize it. Like, and it it, it holds up better on review after you have future information already, yeah. which she does extraordinarily well throughout the series. Yeah. It's lore rather than plot relevant, um, in a way. Mm. Uh, but yeah, other favorites of stuff we mentioned in the chapters. You know, the, the standing behind the bluebell flame um, jar in the courtyard. That visual to me is always just screamed the Hogwarts trio. Um, mm. The twins, the twins. Every every moment with the twins is just is just a standout moment for me. I love spending time with them. Uh, this one, um, the the first introduction of them on the platform um, in this book is something I always look forward to. I, I remember that that first time. Every time I've ever read that, I kind of have memories of reading it um, in various different locations that I did, just because I was so involved with it at the time. Um, anyone else? Have speaking, anything? Speaking, speak, okay. Well, I just wanted to mention just a general comment on our favorite moments. One of the reasons why Harry Potter one is such a great movie for us having seen it when we were 11 is that because it was so faithful to the book, the majority of our favorite moments made their way into the movie as described in the book. It's like, yeah, a few of them were changed, but most of them, everything's there. Yeah. Just just to clarify, uh, the first two movies are not high on my list though. Uh, enjoy them, but they're not high on my list. Just so I can specify, they're definitely it's a lot not, of my favorites whole group. for sure. Oh, yeah, 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 they're not I my favorites. Aside, right. aside from the third one, aside from the third one, they are my favorites for sure. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's I'm... it's high on my. They're not high on my list for the favorite films either. But the the fact is that they um, it's mostly because they're so in power with the books. It's a compliment to them more than anything else. It's the fact that the books are just yeah. a better right. version uh, rather than anything else. But that's the thing. It's kind of like what Karn just said. Like when I see these, I go, "Oh, I see realizations of the books." And when I see the later films, I go, "Oh, everything I see isn't here. Yeah. Like, really, everything I want to see is not <laughs> right." Here. In every case, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's why it should be a series, a film yeah, franchise, eventually, one day, <laughs> um, and hopefully for the good. Who knows? But, uh, but anyway, guys, transitioning in over t- into criticisms, I think. Um, not that we have many or particularly significant ones. Uh, any flaws with this book you want to mention? Uh, a very, very, very minor one, but I actually prefer the characterization of Snape in the movies versus the books, because the problem is, is that the Snape in the books, well, he's just too petty and emotional, like compared to like, obviously, this is always in comparison to Alan Rickman. But considering how petty and emotional he is with Harry, I just don't see how this guy is supposed to be a legilimens capable of hoodwinking even Voldemort. It's like, because Snape in this book does not have much of a poker face. It's for me, mm. for me, we mentioned it earlier in the, in the actual chapter recordings. It's the fact that it's Harry. His is the one un, undoing of the character when it comes to that kind of, um, you know, piercing his mask. Um, I, I definitely agree that he's flawed in this book, but I think it's more the early books of the series rather than him in the books in general for me. It's, it's well, one of my criticisms uh, as well, or leans into one of my criticisms with the whole whimsy of the early series damaging the uh, overall whole when you look back on it. And like what you were I saying, say, I think his pettiness is fine because it is Harry. Uh, like, even when we see in the fifth book, like, 
um, Harry's able to counter uh, the legitimate. So it's like, yeah, yeah, I think that's fine that it's just specifically Harry. That is the one that is the foil for him. How I feel about that is I think it's fine. Like, Connor, if that's your preference, there's nothing wrong with that. People have their preferences. Um, But I think that the movies are more consistent in the way that they portray Snape. Like, in that way, like, he seems a little bit more, like, emotionally unstable um, sort of like, I don't know. I get what Connor's saying. Like, I, mm. it's it's not really that's not my direct criticism, but that leads into what my overall mm. one is. But it's a little bit more overarching, so I'll wait until someone else well, goes. Well, it's also because I kind of prefer how Snape expresses his hatred towards Harry in the films with more of that cold disdain and indifference, which to me kind of made it seem a little bit more like coming from a deeper place and it's more affecting whereas the douchebaggery in the book it's like there are a few moments where i was thinking am i reading professor snape or kylo ren oh my god yeah no, i can kind of see where you're coming from though i also don't it, okay I'm, I'm fine with kylo yeah. ren as well but yeah <laughs> yeah well my biggest criticism would be less less story story centric and more of like a structural thing having to do with the book itself. You know, the fact that it is kind of geared towards more of a younger audience, perhaps most strongly in this book means that you'll have some strange tropes that really only come up for children's books. You know, we, we mentioned it in our review, like Harry flying in on his broom into the forest to spy on, you know, Coral and Snape who just so happened to be there at Mm. that time saying those very specific things that he wants to know without being noticed. Well, we, without being noticed at that moment from his perspective that, and stuff yeah. like that's just like uh i mean it, it, it's it, it's it's kind of it's a bitter pill to swallow and it's not it's just yeah i'm not crazy about it and it, it just makes it seem less consistent with the rest of the series that's my criticism of it, it not that specific moment but it's right. a little she, she's definitely like still finding her voice when she's writing this mm-hmm. one th- this particular book i think she got it right like you know midway through into it basically um right but it's a, as much as we were saying like some of like the subtler things or the way that dumbledore speaks or like sort of the distinction she's able to draw between characters my one criticism if i'm going looking for one because i do love this book um is that she's a little too heavy-handed it, it, but it's appropriate you just you just don't age with it or you age mm-hmm. out you grow out of it you know what i mean it's it's mm-hmm. fine for the book but it is like snape is a little too in character like he is very much the red herring um there's little things that are like explained away a little bit too easily for me like i think harry is a little too aware of like dumbledore's motives like he knows everything that's going on he wanted me to face voldemort so that i can be ready it's like would you know that would you say that would you really be aware i don't think so but this book needs an ending so you know cap it you know um it's perfect for like the the audience that's reading this kids Mm. right Mm -hmm. but you age a little it's aged a little ever so slightly poorly for like an adult revisiting it in that specific regard. That's my one criticism right. of the book. It's the same with me, really. The, the, uh, it's a double-edged sword. You know, these are criticisms that come about as a result of its original purpose. It was aimed for the young um, kids. And, it, you know, for a series that you very, very clearly, for that generation anyway, grew up with, you know, you, you do read these and grow up as, as, as they came out, um, along with the characters. Uh, looking back on it as an adult, that's 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 part of the problem with it. You know, if you design it for that young age to start with, and it grows as as you go along, you're going to have that problem looking back. So while I completely agree with it, the early whimsy of the series um, in the first few books it hinders you know the, your ability to appreciate it as an adult. At least the fine tune um, structural points that we're saying with the red herring, for example, is, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's not something it's something I can easily forgive. And I know it's only minor criticism here anyway. We're not saying it breaks the book by any means, but um, it's a mm-hmm. flaw that is it's, acceptable to me yeah, as it's... just you know necessary. Yeah, it's not like the book is wrong. It's just this is probably the biggest reason why I don't read it as often as I do the other ones. I reread those all the time. I love those books so much. I I still like this one. I just don't revisit it nearly as often. Mm. It gets left Mm. behind a bit as a result of its whimsy. Mm. Uh, Yeah, I don't have any absolutely no like major criticisms of it at all. Like I don't care about the plot conveniences. I think that's just something that happens in narratives pretty much all the time and it's okay to have a few of those every so often it's a sometimes referred to as a magic bean situation like you know just like oh it's just a magic bean you know you get to have a few of those sometimes um and yeah i didn't really have the same feelings about snape at all like i think snape's completely fine for this book and what he grows into later on in the series so i didn't have any issues with that or anything really uh with the book majorly i mean maybe a few like specific senses that i might not have like jived with or whatever or, or didn't age well but 
but in terms of an overall structure, there's like no major issues for me at, at, on this book at all, or even minor uh, for, to that point. Okay, fair enough. It must be really, uh, really wonderful to go back to this one specifically then for you, uh, not having any any of the usual stick up hang ups with it. But uh, no, I don't have to worry for sure. Nothing, yeah. Well, uh, anyone have any closing thoughts then? Because uh, those are very, very minor criticisms on an otherwise beloved book uh, by each of us. Uh, anyone have anything they want to add before we wrap up? It's a perfect example of what it's trying to be, which is the introduction to a series. Mm -hmm. hmm. Not not in my top three top three for the series, but still uh, very enjoyable. Does its job, you know, exactly like Connor just said, sets out to do exactly what it needs to do, and... You know, like we've said multiple times, revisiting it was a total joy. So, yeah, highly recommended still. Mm -hmm. I think it might even be in my bottom three, but that doesn't make it bad as far as this mm -hmm. series goes. I love all right. the Harry Potter books. So. Yeah. Right. So it's That's always it. the case for me talking about things that you love. It's like, yeah, not saying it's bad at all. It's just that it's just not my emo favorite. Yeah, it's definitely not one of my top. Um, but I think it's also very essential in the same way I think the first two movies are very essential in the way that they were made um, and the way they were produced in terms of movie production and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's uh, it's a very, very good introduction because you don't want to overwhelm someone with, you know, every every mystery or every thing or every world piece of world that you've built. And it, she does the right job of just showing the tip of the iceberg and uh, showing it more and more throughout the series. Completely agree. Perfect introduction. Uh, it's it's the first step into a larger world, as we said earlier. It's basically just sums up <laughs> the, the book as a whole. Um, and more importantly, you get to see the characters for the first time. You know, these are the people. This is the book that ties you to them and their story, and really, if nothing else, captures your attention. And uh, and given that's what it was supposed to do, I think it did it very yeah, well. Yeah, like looking back on it, like this was definitely like the series where I was definitely like really looking forward to like the next book coming out, oh, like yeah. in a fervor. Like oh, that was yeah. like not really a thing for me. I wasn't like a voracious reader in that way. I looked, I, you know, cherished that moment when like a new Harry Potter book was announced, let mm -hmm. alone released. There is a reason that <clears throat> Harry Potter is the series that kind of sparked off uh, the mass, you know, public domain knowledge of people queuing outside of bookstores, you know, outside of bookstores. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, obviously that's a thing now, and, and it was a thing before, but that was what made it, you know, a massively popular news story to uh, to be seen. It was Harry Potter, and uh, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's all. This be, that's all. That's all we have to say on that. Um, so yeah, wrapping up, guys. Score, I'm ready. Score out of ten. Score nine out of and ten. three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I like it. <laughs> that. Was nice. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was good. That was good. Um, yeah, closing on that then. I'm ready for and I still don't have an outro. Oh, yeah, right. Um, Grey Jenner 91, goodbye. <laughs> Evan Ova 95, we hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys later. Jen Sarai 1, uh, teach us something, please. Antoine Vandalay, peace. Oh, wait, this is totally different. This is Mischief Managed. <laughs>